Hi guys, Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Today I'm gonna go over five ways to increase your testosterone or boost your testosterone naturally. So make sure you stick around to get each and every one of those tips. First off, why does everyone even care about testosterone? Having low testosterone can create a lot of unwanted symptoms like low libido, low energy, difficulty concentrating, and losing muscle mass. So not only does it cause these really frustrating symptoms, it can also be a risk factor for other really scary things like heart disease, metabolic syndrome, which includes diabetes and hypertension, osteoporosis, and even all-cause mortality or death. So making sure that your testosterone levels are optimal is really important. Number one, lose weight. Yeah, easy to say, why does it even matter? Well, the reason being is that obesity or being overweight means that you have more fat cells. And fat cells actually have a specific enzyme in them which takes all that good healthy testosterone and converts it into estradiol. So it is well understood in the scientific literature that weight loss in overweight and obese men can help boost testosterone levels significantly. And how much weight do you really need to lose? So in one study, they looked at the amount of weight loss that was needed to increase testosterone levels, and they found that an average of 21 kilograms or nearly 46 pounds was the average amount of weight loss by people who did increase their testosterone level. But do you really need to lose 46 pounds? Well, sure, that would be great. But another study looked at specifically physical activity and diet, and how did those contribute to increasing testosterone? So what that study concluded was that increasing your activity level could actually reduce the amount of weight loss that you need. If you increase your physical activity, you might actually need to lose even less weight, something like 12 kilograms or 26 pounds. And that brings us to our number two suggestion, which is exercise. Great, so exercise is important for testosterone, but what kind of exercise? Should I just go for a walk? Well, actually they've studied this. So they looked at young, healthy men and who are already physically active and they put them into two categories. They put them into a steady state exercise where they ran to achieve a certain output for 40 to 45 minutes at a continuous level. So the other half, were put into a group of high intensity exercise. And what that means is they went for 90 seconds at a really high output and 90 seconds in a recovery zone. And they did that for about 42 to 47 minutes. They measured their blood levels before the exercise, after the exercise, and 12 hours later. And they found that those who did the high intensity interval training did actually increase their testosterone levels significantly more than those who did steady straight training. However, after 12 hours, they found that this high intensity interval training actually had a lower testosterone level and they hypothesized that they're actually using that testosterone to help recover during that time. So yes, there may be some benefit to doing high intensity interval exercise rather than just going for a walk or going on steady state exercise. So my take home is do some high intensity interval training for a short burst of time and that will increase your testosterone level and be easier to really do on a regular basis. So while exercise is super important for boosting your testosterone, you can't lose weight without going to diet, which is our number three recommendation, diet. What kind of diet should you actually eat? So there's lots of claims to testosterone boosting foods and certainly there are foods that might be better to help boost your testosterone, but how much do you need to eat to make a real impact? It's hard to say. So what I tell all my patients is avoid processed foods. Eat natural foods and fruits and vegetables that you find at the supermarket in the produce aisle. While I was researching testosterone for this video, I actually found an interesting study on the keto diet and testosterone. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please comment below. Or if you've heard of a certain testosterone booster in your diet, let me know so I can comment on the data behind it. But I want to tell you this very recent study that just came out in 2020. They looked at the National Health and Examination Survey or NHANES study, which is a nationally done study looking at 
people all over the country in the United States and getting a lot of information about their diet, their activity level, and blood and urine samples to obtain data that can be used to find correlations between certain things. And so what this group did was they looked at the dietary type of men and their testosterone levels. What they found was that men who restricted fat in their diet were likely to have a lower testosterone level than those who didn't restrict fat in their diet. So does that mean you should eat fat? fatty foods? Well, I don't know yet. I think that specifically if you are a normal weight individual who wants to boost your testosterone, I would not limit fats in your diet because that may be actually limiting your ability for your body to produce testosterone. But if you're overweight, improving your weight is more important than changing the components of your diet. Also, I get a lot of questions about soy products. So are soy products going to make my testosterone level drop? So the reason this comes up is because soy has estrogen-like compounds called isoflavones, which then are concerning for people who want to increase their testosterone level. But what does the data really say? So a 2010 meta-analysis looked at 47 different studies and compiled all the data. And what they found, even a really high intake of soy would not reduce your testosterone levels. And I'm going to tell you about one of these studies because I thought it was really interesting. This study took young men between the ages of 18 and 30, and they were randomized for a period of four weeks to twice a day take either a vanilla flavored soy protein or a vanilla flavored whey protein or vanilla flavored cake mix. And so they didn't know what they were getting. They got these little plastic baggies with them and they were supposed to take it for four weeks and see how it impacted their testosterone levels. And what this study found was that even this high intake of soy proteins, which was the equivalent of 41.5 grams of soy protein per day did not affect testosterone levels even after taking it consistently for four weeks. So my advice to you is don't worry too much about the soy products that you're eating, especially if you're getting good healthy protein from soy products, it's probably not going to impact your testosterone levels. That's what the data says. Number four, good sleep. So did you guys know from 1985 to now, there has been actual data to suggest that American adults are getting less and less sleep and poor quality of sleep. So how does that sleep impact your testosterone levels? So there's actually two interesting studies on this. One study looked at 2,300 men in that same National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey or the NHANES survey. And what they found was that Per each hour of sleep that people reported getting less, their testosterone decreased by almost six points. Another study looked at 10 healthy men, and what they did was they had them sleep for three days over eight hours. And then after that, they slept for eight days and they were required to sleep for only five hours and they measured their daytime testosterone levels. And what they found was that they decreased their testosterone levels by 15%. And where they get this idea of sleeping for five hours, well, actually, they found that this is the exact sleeping pattern or sleep restriction of 15% of the working adult population. So sleep is super, super important. More recent data has suggested that it might be related to the time when you wake up. So there may be some circadian rhythm association. So if you're waking up really, really early, that may be more detrimental to your testosterone level than going to sleep a little bit later. So bottom line is get better sleep and sleep for longer periods of time. So try to reduce sleep interruptions, avoid looking at your phone before bedtime, and try to really get into a bedtime routine and go to sleep around the same time and wake up around the same time each and every day. And number five, avoid endocrine disrupting chemicals. So endocrine disrupting chemicals are found throughout our environment due to pollution in certain cosmetics or consumable items, as well as plastics. The most popular of these are called BPA or bisphenol A. And how do these actually work to impact your testosterone levels? So they actually disrupt endocrine action and testosterone is created through an endocrine process. So 
being exposed to endocrine disrupting chemicals can actually result in a number of problems. They've been found to be associated with not only low testosterone, but diabetes, obesity, learning problems, and even cancer. Another study looking at the NHANES database looked at young adults, so young kids, and found out their level of BPA exposure by looking at the urinary concentration and also correlated this with their testosterone level. And they found that in adolescent boys, having a higher amount or higher exposure to BPAs was correlated with a lower testosterone level. So how can you avoid BPAs? Well, avoid using plastic containers. Use alternatives like glass or metal or other things and don't warm things up in plastic containers. You can also cut back on your use of cans and look for products that are labeled BPA-free. You'll see that all over. BPA-free, that means that they don't have bisphenol A, which is really important in avoiding those kind of endocrine-disrupting chemicals. So wait, don't leave yet. I'm gonna talk about a supplement that I've read about that people said might boost testosterone. This is called ashwagandha. What is ashwagandha? Ashwagandha is an herb that has been touted to have really good benefits of stress relief and anxiety reduction. And so this has actually been studied in a randomized trial, meaning that they took 60 adults and they randomized them to receive either ashwagandha or a placebo medication. And what they found was that they did actually increase their testosterone levels, but this was not statistically significant. So what does that mean? It basically means that it's likely due to chance that that increase happened. They did find, however, that there was a reduction in anxiety and depression in people who were taking the supplement. So certainly that can reduce your stress levels, which can be important for improving testosterone levels overall. All right, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw, make sure you subscribe and comment below on other things you wanna learn about. And always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.